I'm Jesse De La Cruz. I'm from the underserved community of South Central Los Angeles. Uh, growing up in South Los Angeles, I seen a lot of uh, gang infested neighborhood, drug infested neighborhood. Um, at 12 years old, my father left us. I felt a sense of abandonment and neglect. Um, due to that, I started being truant from school to hang out with friends. Uh, that led to probation. Probation later led to incarceration. And uh, that's kind of how my story started, getting involved um, in this, in the criminal system. Um, as a youth, I made a lot of decisions that um, aggravated my case once I got older. Um, and from nonviolent to violent offenses. Uh, at 19 years old, I uh, was hanging out with some friends at a bar and uh, we committed a robbery. Not strong arm, just uh, took someone's money. And uh, because it was a group of us, a group of three, they uh, applied a crime called the gang enhancement. This uh, added more years to my case. Um, but I remember going back to my cell as a youth and uh, I already felt abandoned by my father, my family. I had to uh, spend nights in tents and skid row, selling drugs to survive. Um, and remembering, thinking to myself, going back to the cell after getting sentenced to eight years and like my community abandoned me too. And I felt hopeless, um, went back, cried that night, and um, kind of just thought to myself, like, I couldn't even think eight years ahead, like, like what's next? Like, really, like, I am lost my childhood. Um, what do I do? I'm from a gang. Do I pursue this career? And the adult system uh, was pretty harsh, like you go in as a youth and I guess the spotlight is on you. Like, they're waiting for you to uh, slip up so they can put you in your place. Um, and they actually look, the, the adults, the older guys in there, look at you as a target to be used to commit these acts of uh, gang validation to to uh, forward the gang um, whatever uh, like life so to speak and um, in the adult system that that's how my journey began there since being released um, I guess my initial thing was like I have no family no shelter no housing um, so I, I uh, did some things to survive, to get by. Because my reality is I need somewhere to sleep. Um, I didn't have no access to jobs. Um, because of my criminal record, I did apply to jobs. But because of the conviction checkbox, I was not considered. Um, so my journey has been, right now I'm a full-time student at my Los Angeles Trade Technical College. I'm a president of my own student organization that I launched that helps uh, people re-enter in society from prison yards to college campuses. We focus on education, not incarceration. And uh, showing the cost and effect of education versus incarceration. In uh, California, there's a big prison complex bubble and uh, we're doing what we can as students to advocate for that and end mass incarceration. Um, being released, um, it was kind of hard to tell my story because I, I uh, have an uncle that's very prominent and uh, connected me with politicians where I work with them on their campaigns. And I never wanted to share like my conviction history or nothing because I thought I, they seen me as a regular kid. And one time I go advocate 
for an urban development project in Los Angeles City Hall. And he said, man, you should use your story. And I kind of was like, I don't want to. Not in front of the whole city council and the mayor, like, definitely not. He said, yeah, man, like, you can bring some fel a felony friendly jobs or end the uh, ban on conviction. And I was thinking to myself, like, that raises, like, a bigger purpose in my life, like, to give back to the people that I know, like, where I come from. So I did a speech, uh, got a job with the local city councilman to work with him, and um, also I'm a young leader at the, at the, in the foster care department uh, at the Alliance for Children's Rights, advocating for more just laws for foster youth. And I do policy work, policy intern for Anti-Recidivism Coalition. And that's just uh, progressing the laws in California to bring our youth home and make sure our youth get treated more fairly. Right now we're working on Senate Bill 394 to end life without parole for youth. The adult system does have more vocational and college programs than the juvenile system in California, uh, but the culture in the adult system doesn't really focus on rehabilitation, like some of the compassion you get on the youth side. You do have, a, in the youth side, you have a counselors, people coming in from the community to talk to you because you're a youth. And um, you got more of a second chance, but like uh, the criminal proceedings, the youth is, uh, will be better than the adult system because once you get charged as an adult, is like for life, youth, as a youth, you can still seal it. Um, and people in, in, in employment, you could say I did that as a youth. But if you have an adult record, it's like a perpetual sentence. Race and ethnicity, from my own, from my own experience with race, um, that always been a factor of my whole behavior. Um, I remember my neighborhoods, you couldn't go to a certain area because the color of your skin. Uh, the racism in Los Angeles uh, between African-American community and the Mexican community it's prevalent, like, um, it, there's, there's, there's a, a factor in that. But I remember, to this day, actually last week, um, I'm driving in South Los Angeles. I have a little LA blue hat. I do have a new vehicle. And uh, I'm young, in a new car. I get pulled over by the LAPD. So to say race plays a factor, to this day, and I'm doing real good. I'm a college student, full-time employee, pay taxes, and I still have problems with the law because of the color of my skin. So I do believe there's some stigma and the way police officers are trained needs to change because they do have a preconceived notion of who a criminal is. And uh, a, a, before, and I think that raises a bigger issue in regards to the media. Uh, if, you, if you're sitting in your house in Malibu or Beverly Hills and you're looking at the news, you're constantly seeing people of color committing crimes. And um, I think that's always in the jury head uh, when you go to trial. Like, usually when you're being judged, you're being judged by predominantly uh, people of white color. So, um, and race also inside the system. Um, in California, there's segregation. You can't interact with the African-American community. You can't step certain boundaries because you'll be stabbed to death. You can't even talk to them, even if you know them from your community. Uh, you can exercise with them, eat with them, um, and that's that's a whole racial barrier right there. You can't even use the same fountain, so there's like a Jim Crow style law in there, like where it's um, 
Yeah, it, 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 it exists. I think good alternatives to youth incarceration needs to begin in our schools and our households uh, because as youth, that's where you're gonna spend most of your time. Um, good family values, and if a family is dysfunctional, um, being able to connect that youth with a mentor. And not a mentor that someone picks, an organization, it's someone that youth feels confidence in because the youth will have to open up, trust the person to be able to share his thoughts, emotions, feelings, and what he wants to do in life. Like just the whole, having a coach to be able to set goals. And um, that's, that's to prevent the youth. But um, once the youth, I think is already involved criminally, like I feel that youth need to connect with other youth that are doing good things in their community. All that come from this background, such as myself, uh, that already took these steps criminally and unfortunately went to the adult system and reach out to them and tell them that this there's more options. This is what I'm doing now. You don't have to go the way I did. Um, also, um, some alternatives can be um, being able to provide these youth with opportunities, get them involved in um, programs, community-based programs, wraparound services, to do more community service work, uh, whether it be cleaning graffiti, picking up trash, and uh, possibly connect them to other organizations where they can find employment, house them eventually, and uh, connect them to schools. And also, um, maybe group homes would be a good option. But like if I understand some cases like are just extreme and you have to use a jail or, or youth, youth detention center as a choice, as an option. And I think um, when it gets to that point, a youth should never be considered to be put in an adult system. Actually, there's room for change. Um, provide the youth with therapy because uh, in psychology you got something called uh, nature versus nurture and you don't know the youth's environment or what's going on mentally so finding solutions to provide the youth with love compassion and therapy will be the ultimate like factor that's going to help them change